Hello chess fans! Today I'm going to show you an easy way you can beat the King's Gambit. And I'm going to do this by looking at one of my own games, but also looking at what they can deviate with. So let's start off with e4, e5, and my opponent plays f4. So this is the King's Gambit, and I decide to take. So this, I think, is the most practical way to play. And um, so first I'm going to start off with what if they play the Bishop's Gambit. This is one of the variations they can play. It's not that common. Just remember, whenever you see this Bishop c4 move on the third move, play Knight c6. Very critical move. Not a lot of people know this. And it's not one of the main lines. And here they can do a variety of things. I think uh, if they play Knight f3, it will transpose to the King's Gambit. But if they go d4, you can go Knight f6, attacking the pawn. For example, if they go e5, you always meet it with d5, counterattacking the bishop. And notice that the bishop moves and the knight can move somewhere like e4 and then uh, defend the uh, pieces. So here, black would be better. Okay, so instead of that, they can go knight c3, which also defends their pawn. And here, be careful, you don't have center fork trick because they have queen e2. But instead, we can go for bishop b4. And we're pinning the knight to the king and we're threatening here. And here, they, the only way to defend that is here to defend the pawn. And don't be greedy, you can't take here because they get a lot of compensation after castles. So here, we just go f3. And after it takes, d5. And their structure is very bad here. And here, black is slightly better. So that's the bishop's gambit, pretty much a summary of that. So instead of that, knight f3 is the most common move, and that's what my opponent played. And here, I'm going to recommend the Fisher defense. And the Fisher defense, I think, is the most practical way to play and the simplest way to play. So my opponent and the game started off with d4. Now, let's talk about uh, the other way they play the bishop's gambit, which is bishop c4. Here, just make sure you remember this move. If you remember anything from this, make sure you remember this move. Here, you only have one move. You have to play h6. The idea is if you play g5 here, you will be completely lost. And I've lost a few blitz games like this. After here, g4, they have knight g5 attacking here, and you're dead lost. So make sure to play h6. Now here they have two options. They can either uh, d4, they can go d4, or they can play h4. And castles is pretty much the same as d4. So h4 I think is the best move. And here you're going to go knight f6, attacking the pawn. And essentially you've created some nice light squares for your pieces. And after knight c3, knight c6, d4, here they're starting to win the pawn back here. You go knight h5. And then knight sits nicely on h5. The bishop is going to come to g4 to protect it. And white's going to be up, a, black's going to be up a pawn. White doesn't have much compensation here. And black's doing really well in the database. So instead of that, um, yeah, so don't play uh, g5 here. Instead of that, they should probably go for d4, but this transposes to a bad line. This is what is called Fisher's reputation. After g5, uh, castles, bishop g7, c3. Uh, Fisher wrote a very nice uh, article about this, and you can check it out for yourself. You can probably find it online. But basically, this position is minus 2, as you can see by the evaluation bar. And it's not that very difficult to play for white. What you're going to do is uh, knight c6, queen e7, or knight e7, knight g6, and slowly just advance your your pawns and here you have minus two advantage because you're even better on the king side so let's look at instead when my opponent played d4 this is a little bit more common so here you're going to play g5 because now there's no longer sort of h4 and sacking the sacking the knight with the bishop defending it okay so here my opponent played h4 which is the main move now other moves here are not really worth discussing bishop c4 would transpose and make sure after bishop c4 you have to play this critical move h6 remember this so my opponent played uh, bishop h4 and here I played g4, attacking the knight. And here my opponent really shocked me. So my opponent ended up playing knight g5. But before we uh, go over knight g5, uh, first let's discuss knight g1. So knight g1 is the main move. And for a long time, I kind of had difficulty with this move. Until I discovered this really nice move, f5. So I used to think queen f6 was the best move. But after knight c3, along with knight e2 and queen d2 threatening this pawn, there's really no way you defend it. And the positions are very highly unpleasant. So here I recommend f5. And you might say, oh, white has a little bit of advantage. Why have you done that? It is near impossible to prove white's advantage here, and not to mention black is doing huge in the database here. So here, most the most common move is knight c3. But after this, you can just take, and after a bishop takes, you can just defend your pawn. And here, you're simply up a pawn. White has little to no compensation. For example, one of the games here went queen d2, and after c6, uh, white castled. And here, after bishop d6, black was essentially winning because they just up a pawn for zero compensation. And the position is very locked, so the development lead white has doesn't really matter. And here, black's better. So instead of that, they could also go for bishop takes f4, which would transpose. After here, they have to go knight c3. And the final move they can play is e takes f5, in which case you have queen e7. And they have no good moves. For example, if they go king g3, you can go g3, and here you're completely winning. Uh, f Simple enough is to go here, threatening checkmate. So, uh, yeah, so they can't do that. So they probably have to block with the queen, in which case you can just take here. And, okay, you're trading queens, you're up a pawn. If they take here, you can take here, and you're just up a pawn. Simply enough. So, yeah, that's basically how you counter that if they go knight g1. Just remember this f5 move. So now my opponent played knight g5. 
and I'd never seen this move before in the game, and I was very shocked. I was like, wait, is that not just a free piece after h6? Notice we're trapping the knight. Well, it is. And this has actually been played by Alexander Morovich versus Gary Kasparov. I didn't know that, but after my opponent took here, and I was shocked at this because it's just, you know, a free piece. And here, I think my opponent should have taken here and sort of keep their position very flexible. Instead, they played bishop c4. Not a bad move, but after king g7, they made a huge blunder. Here, after bishop takes f4, uh, the position is actually not as good as it seems for black. Black is only here minus 1 when they're up a piece, which should be around minus 3. So white definitely does have some compensation here after something like castles coming soon and the queen coming in along with the pieces being very dangerously placed. But here black should win most games. I don't think it's that difficult to prove. But instead of that, my opponent castled. And take a few seconds here to see if you can find the best move. Here I found the best move. It's not particularly difficult, but... It's a good exercise if you haven't seen the source of position to see if you have the feel for the position. So I recommend pausing. So uh, here I thought for around 10-ish, 20-ish minutes, and I ended up playing this move, f3. And what is the idea of f3? It's basically saying, oh, you missed your chance to take here with the bishop. I want you to move this here so that after I take on h4, I'm giving this check here. Here my opponent took here, and I played queen g2 check, king h1, played knight f6, attacking both these pawns. Notice... Uh, you might ask why I didn't go here. If I if I go here, I'll just show you a lesson in calculation. They take here. I take with the bishop. They have rook f7 check, king g6, and then rook takes f8 because the bishop was undefended. So if you don't see all that, take some time and make sure to pause the video. Instead of that, I played queen g3, king h1, knight f6. And here my opponent, I think, might have thought that they had here. They told me after the game they were calculating this. But here, simple enough, queen h4, and I pick up the rook. If I take with the king, it's actually risky after queen f1. For example, king g7, queen f7 is a way to lose the game. And here I would have to allow a perpetual, oops, sorry, allow a perpetual after this. Yeah, and that would be perpetual. So, yeah, I had to be careful about that. And so that's why I kept my king on there. And here my opponent played e5, which is a huge blunder because it's just a free pawn. And here my opponent took back. And yeah, as you can see by the eo bar, it's, it's mate in eight. So see if you can find a pretty easy way to win the game. Notice that they got rid of this diagonal. That's your hint. And so, yeah, the move is queen h3 here and bishop c5. And there's no way to defend this. And this should be a pattern you kind of recognize. Because when the queen is here, they only don't cover these two dark squares. So you need a bishop on that diagonal and it will be mate. So here my opponent made rook f2 and I take, 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 check. And yeah, my opponent resigned here. But after here, check, here, check, here. This is what I was planning to do. And I wasn't planning to mate him. But yeah. So that's my video on how you beat the King's Gambit. If you liked the video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe. And I hope you guys have some, some, some success against the King's Gambit after seeing this video. So yeah, with that all said and done, I'll see you guys in the next one.